Hey fellas, time for another gaming vlog in between some bigger videos got from this week. Least of all, my look at Lightyear, another video I've got in mind. So, as per usual, just while I talk about things other than what I've been playing, I start with the good news and then transition to the okay and the bad news. So, let's get started. The good PlayStation Plus has officially relaunched today. Hey, with my current tier being the essential tier, which I'll be sticking with for now. How? With the plus, and especially the premium tiers, having even more titles than they, they were initially planning on. A combined and 800 games at launch cost five console generations more to come. Um, like the retro titles I did not previously address as a part of this lineup were only fairly recently revealed to be NTSC Prince of Day. There was concern that it'd be PAL, like in Hong Kong, as well as CPS Classic, but thankfully that's not the case. They include Toy Story 2, Buzz Laser Rescue, which is pretty timely inclusion given Lightyear's coming out on Friday. And the director's cut of Vision Evil, a very pleasant surprise, I would say. I know I had the remaster one on, but just something I have to say about the original, and it's kind of like what Castle Mania, even though the Lightyear ports had a more accurate translation, just something about the original mimetic lines that do it for me way too much, so I'd definitely be opting into this, not right away, but later in the year here, I mean, especially have a product description again, so yeah. Now we've got the, uh, the okay-ish ones, so... We've had some updates on Sonic Frontiers, which have been, for the most part, much better received than the initial one, which I honestly think that should have been the opener, or at the very least, it shouldn't have given IGN the exclusives, given how Nintendo everything, as well as Game Matsu, have managed to put it in the context in much better light. And even though there's allegedly some people who are bound to NDA agreements, agreements there's still leaks coming out, which kind of nullifies that. And while Izuka has claimed that people aren't seeing the full picture, as well as is emphatically denying there's going to be any more delays, I feel like I've heard this before. I mean, and it's honestly not going to surprise me if they have to push it back again. Like, I'm not actively backing calls for delays from the VLR, but I once again reiterate that if they have to, it's not going to surprise me I would support such a measure. So, yeah. Now. The bad news. It seems that Diablo Immortal, in the wake of its massively unpopular monetization aspects, and especially in regards to rifts, has now gotten to not the a record new low meta score or, or by use of Metacritic, not only surpassing Activision Blizzard's own own Warcraft 3 Reforged in that regard, but also the lowest on the entire website, which is saying something. And, and I'm not even a big Diablo fan, but I admit that is abysmal, man. And when called out on the issue, Wyatt Chang, who's responsible for the, who was part of the Infos Reveal in 2018, he not only, a show seemed to so little understanding about why people are unhappy. I mean, I mean, instead of owning up, he basically, he, he tried to attribute the, you know, the reception to quote-unquote disinformation, which was really something coming from the guy who's, who, who helped contribute to that, that discourse, so, but I have my doubts about how this, I mean, even if I would remove net easement from the equation, guys, you're really putting the Activision, Activision Blizzard there, aren't you? So, that be as it may, I also will, to, so I'm not close on an entirely negative note, I'll say this. I do not know who, if or when next Nintendo Direct will be this month, but whenever it happens next, I will be addressing Adrich Dreams as per usual. So, anyway, that'll be all for now, so take care everyone. Hmm.